Okay, so if this works, we should be able to type. Oh, we can. Okay, so we're starting, of course, the uh, Bullet Hell project. And one of the things that I noticed that we had trouble with was as our code got bigger and bigger, it got harder and harder to keep track of all of the errors or even where to where code was. People were really struggling to figure out, well, where does this code go? Where, where do I find it? It was getting to be a bit of a problem. And as we go into this project, it's going to be even bigger. So from day one, I would like to organize our code. And definitely, I want everybody to put in a lot of effort to keeping your code organized. Because as we all know, the hardest thing about programming isn't programming, it's fixing your bugs. So if you go to this effort, you'll definitely have a much better time. So we're going to start. And you guys, uh, you know, we're going to just do our usual void setup stuff. So I'll just put in a void setup. Isn't it nice to have like a whole brand new project? It's all fresh. Void draw. Our good old friends. Void setup and void draw. Uh, for this project, I'm going to be making the size of the window the entire screen. So that might vary on different devices. But for me, I'm going to just design it for this particular device. So if you want to make the project fill the entire screen, uh, when you do a size command, you instead of giving it numbers, you can use display width and display height. And that will just automatically, when you run this, it'll, it'll be a full-size screen. And if you just run it with Control-R, you'll get a window that's nice and big, and, that, and that's fine. But the beauty of, of this is that you can run in what's called presentation mode. It's Control-Shift-R. You go Control-Shift-R, it actually just takes up the entire screen with your project. And that's going to be something that we'll want to do. Theoretically, you can press Escape to get back, although I found that doesn't always work. If you, if you can't escape, to get back to your code, just press Alt-Tab and go back to your processing window and then press the Stop button and you can stop it that way as well. Okay, so in the spirit of making our code organized, the first thing I'd like to do is break down our project into sort of different modes. So an intro screen mode, a game mode, a game over mode. You can even have a pause mode if you wanted to have the game pause and, and you show them some information while that's happening. So I'm going to define some modes up here. First of all, uh, I'm going to have a variable called mode. And this will be just an integer that keeps track of which mode we're actually in. Oh, hey, look at that. The screen's actually kind of cut off, hey? Oh, that's just going to be a thing, apparently. Let's, uh, for, th for the purposes of people in the classroom right now, you can't see. So there it is. So it's just an integer variable, and it's going to keep track of the mode. And we could just have like, oh, we're going to say that one is intro, and two is playing the game, and that kind of stuff. But it's easy to forget which mode is which. So a professional programmer would never rely on their memory. They would just code that in. So check out this new kind of variable we're going to make. It's called a final variable. You can call it final variable uh, so that it, it can't change during the course of the game. So you can't accidentally adjust the value. And it's just this constant that you can give a name. So instead of saying, you know, we'll set mode to be 1, and that means uh, it's in the intro screen, what we can do is we can, we can give 1 a name, like intro. And they're always all capitalized. So I'm going to call intro, it's just going to equal 1. And final int, I'll call it um, playing. That's going to equal 2. And final int, game over, will equal 3. And you, know, you could define some other ones if you want to as well, like a pause screen, if you wanted to have like a pause. You can define whatever modes that you might think you might have. I'll put in pause here for, it's fine. So basically now I can use the words intro, playing, game over, and pause to refer to a specific mode. When we start the game, what should our mode probably be? Intro, yeah. So we'll set mode to be intro. And notice how I never have to remember now what, what the numbers were. I just have the word, and, and the words are much easier to remember. So what does this mean exactly? Well, it's just a number, but we can give it meaning by breaking down our draw function into different chunks. So what I can do is say, for example, when I go to draw, I can say if uh, 
mode equals intro. Notice the double equal sign, always our something that's hard to remember. But if we want to compare something, then we use double equal sign. So if mode equals intro, then we should do the draw intro function. And else if uh, mode equals playing, then we'll do the draw game function. Uh, you know, and we can just kind of define a different else if statement for each one of these things. I think I'll put it out like that. Game over. Then we can draw the game over screen. And what I like to do at the very end is just have a a error checking mode that will handle the case if, if it goes all out of control. I haven't put in paused here yet, but we can add that on at any time. I'm just going to put in else here and just say else. Uh, if it's not one of those things, then, then we've, we've got some kind of problem. So I'll just print line to the console. Uh, you done goofed. And that way I know that if I ever see that, and actually when I was developing the game I showed you earlier, I actually saw that printed. I, I had, knew I had made a mistake. So, our, I mean, this won't run. If we go to run this, it's going to complain there's no draw intro function, no draw game function, no draw game over function. So what I'm going to invite you guys to do now is to go make those functions. And you can spend a bit of time just kind of getting a picture to load into the background of your intro screen as an example. Or if you just want to make a color in the background, that's fine, just to give it a distinct color. But go in and actually program some kind of draw intro function, a draw game function, and a draw game over function. And uh, we will carry on from there. And we're going to pause the recording.